Tonight, turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, starting at verse number 1. You probably can quote those next two scriptures word for word. I would hope, think, possibly believe. But I want to share something with you tonight. I told you I'm doing a series on, the, I'll call it the fairy tale series. Last week I shared with you about Cinderella. My wife, who unfortunately was watching from home last week, thought, what in the world are you doing? And she said, you pulled it together. You showed me something. I said, well... I said, you've made reference to this a time or two in our life. And I said, I'm going to pick this one back up and rearrange it a little bit and share that one with you. From Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, if you got it, say amen. amen. Two of you, praise God. I'll wait just three more seconds. Two, one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, what's it? Faith. For by it, for by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. That does not mean the old people. Hello. That means the people that have walked this walk before us, who have lived this life before us, who have been the ones in our history, in our past, our matriarchs and our patriarchs, they obtained a good testimony because of their faith. And I just want to ask you this question tonight. Will that be said of you when your time has come? When that final day of your life on this planet is over, said, and done, will it be able to be said of you that by faith, Gary Dale Camp obtained a good testimony? Well, if you didn't say amen on that one, I don't know what I can get you to say amen on. By faith... Sandra Lawson obtained a good testimony. Who wants to be picked on? By faith, John Ackerman, that big, tall, Santa Claus-looking rascal, obtained a good report, testimony. I don't know about you. I know I'm not going to make everybody happy in this life. I, I would dare say that somebody will hear that Paul W. Nolan has passed on. And they may go, good. I didn't like him anyways. Well, I don't care whether they like me or not. I want to know if my Lord is satisfied with me. I want to know that I've lived by faith. I've walked by faith. I have exhibited the faith that God expects of me so that when my time is over, said, and done, Paul W. Nolan can honestly say, not only of himself, but the Lord say of him, you have obtained a good testimony. Somebody say amen. amen. Father, in Christ's name, help me to share this. Help me to preach this, I pray in Jesus' holy name. And we'll trust you with it. Give you the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody said. Amen. You've all heard the story of three little pigs. Those three pigs have names and I confess I didn't bother to mess with them. Who cares? As long as they're making bacon, everything's going to be all right. Slab a country ham so often just does it all for me. I went to Bojangles the other day. I thought we were in tribulation. It had a sign out there that said, We're sorry, but we do not have bacon or ham or steak. And I'm like, Why are you open? If you've never been to Bojangles and God, I love their biscuits. Their biscuits have got apparently a little salt on them. But that country ham, oh, I'm so glad the Father 
sanctified them. Can I get a witness? You had me at bacon, Pastor. The three little pigs were sent out, according to the original story, were sent out by their mother to make their mark in the world. In other words, get out. Somebody, we're living in a day and time when little pigs are staying home instead of going out and making their mark. But it was time for them to show themselves that they were able to take care of themselves and do for themselves and, and, and provide for themselves. Now, this story has been around, published for the first time in 1840. That's, that's a little ways ago, almost 200 years. But the fact of the matter is, the story itself may be a few hundred years or a couple of hundred years older than that, that it's been told. There are several various variations of the story, and it's been told and retold so many times. There's sometimes the pigs survive. Uh, all the pigs survive, and then sometimes two of the pigs don't survive, and the third one does. And uh, there's the one where the wolf is boiled uh, because he comes down the, the chimney into the third pig's house, and he's got a pot sitting on the fire in the fireplace, and it's boiling, and he had boiled wolf for evening supper that night. And, and there are those that, that when the the, the wolf comes up and he huffs and he puffs to blow the house down that he strains himself so much, apparently a brain aneurysm got him and he died in the front yard of the third pig's house. Or at best, he fainted. Preacher, I cannot believe you're doing this. Hold on. It gets better. What I want us to do is to look at this story and how it so easily relates to how we live our lives by faith. And thus, by the varying levels of faith. Jesus was remarkable in how that he assessed people's levels of faith. He said to his own disciples, why is it that you have so little faith? He said of a centurion, I have not seen such great faith. Anywhere in all of Israel. Jesus said, if you can have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain. And he's looking at Herod's mountain. Maybe you don't know about Herod's mountain. Herod's mountain was a man-made mountain in a flat plain. Herod had them literally build him a mountain so he could put his palace up on top of that man-made mountain. And everybody was astounded by the fact that he literally made a mountain out of a molehill. Hello? And they were overwhelmed by the ability of this man, Herod, to be able to create a mountain where there had been no mountain. But Jesus, while he's telling them this about the mustard seed, he's saying, if you've got faith that's as powerful as a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain. I can see him point at Herod's mountain. I can see him point right over there at the man that's given them so much grief. You can say to this mountain, be thou plucked up and thrown into the sea, and it will will be done. Our problem is, is we look more to the mountain than we look to the author and the finisher of our faith. I think it's time again, child of God, that we dig in deep. We reach in deep. We grab a hold of two handfuls of the faith of God that he's given to us and make up our mind to live it like we believe it. Somebody say amen. Now there's some things you need to grasp here. To fully appreciate this story and its application, you need to look at the characters and the situation. There's essentially only four characters. Three of them are in one group. One of them is by his lonesome. When you look at the pigs, you need to understand that in what I'm going to share with you tonight, pigs represent believers. Don't be offended. Jesus called us sheep. Not exactly the best thing he could have called us. Sheep are stupid. Amen. We don't know because we don't raise sheep. We raise sheep dogs, but we don't raise sheep for the sheep dogs. Sheep can see a beam of light from the sun coming through a crack in the barn and think that beam of light is solid and they can't go over it. And all the other sheep have pushed up and they, come on, man, you need to move. <laughs> 
And they won't budge because they think that beam of light is in their way. And until the sun either rises or sets in such a way that the beam of light is gone, they will stand right there. Sheep will not run when attacked. They will stand there and be devoured. Maybe Jesus knew what he was talking about after all. It would have been better that Jesus would have said, you are the elephants of the Lord. Now I'm going to get in trouble. God knows we're trying. Think about elephants is you teach them something one time and they remember it. You can take and place a band around their leg and attach it to a thick, heavy logging chain and drive a stake deep into the earth and attach that chain to that stake and that elephant will go as far as that chain will allow. But later on in life, they can take that shackle off. They can remove that chain. And as long as that elephant is where he's supposed to be, he'll always do this with his legs stuck out like he's still attached to that chain, still grounded down, still anchored into the world. Let me tell you, it's time that some of us realize the chains are gone. The shackles are gone. The fetters are gone. We are no longer bound in the name of Jesus Christ. We have been set free, turned loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe we ought to be the elephants of the Lord in the one sense. Pigs here are all part of a brotherhood. These three pigs are brothers, all born to the same sow. And they represent Christian fellowship or Christian belief together like a church, if you will. They also have faith. All three of them have faith. If you go to the original story when mom said, get out, go out and make your own homes, go out and make your own way in life and everything, these three pigs had the faith to leave mama's house, not try to sneak back in. But they went on and went about their way and they had faith enough to go on and do what they could where they could. The problem was they used their faith differently. There are consequences as well as rewards for the use of your faith or the lack of use of your faith. The wolf, hey, he's the devil. He's the devil, the adversity that comes in every person's life at some point. If you live long enough to get older, how much older? It doesn't matter. If you just get older from the day that you were born, you're going to face adversity. There will be a day that you're hungry. Wah. There will be a day you need to be changed. Wah. There will be a day you need to be burped. Wah. There will be a day you need to be held. Wah. There will be a day you need to be sung to. You need to be held. You need to be rocked. Adversity comes. And the older you get, the more the adversity becomes tougher to deal with. I met this gal the other day at a fast food place, and she was complaining to me. I said, what's wrong? She said, my car is broke. She don't know it, but she already told me that story once. She told me that story four months ago. I'm thinking in four months, you ought to have something worked out. Because she told me the same thing she told me four months earlier. I guess I just need to break down and get me a new car. Second time around, I agreed with her. She still didn't recognize who I was. She didn't realize she had already told me this story. She said, nothing works on it. It won't start. The battery's dead. Transmission's locked up. Tires are flat. And I'm like, why are you messing with it? Either fix it or whoever is nice enough to bring you to work, just shut up and let them. Slip them a 10 every once in a while for some gas money. Some folks just never get beyond their situation, but that's for next week's message. When you begin to take a look at this first little pig, you realize this pig has the ability to do so much more than he did, but chooses to do as little as possible to get by in this life. Can I tell you, our nation right now is ridiculed. And we are being ridiculed by people who can do so much more, but all they want to do is give me, give me, give me. Shout with me anytime now. Amen. It's one thing to need a little credit to get you by, but friend, they don't want to pay it back. They want you to give it, but don't expect me to give it back to you. Don't expect me to pay it back. I got news for you. It doesn't work that way. If somebody gives you credit, then you've got to pay it. And if you don't pay it, there has to be extenuating circumstances that prevent that. But I can tell you straight up, 
We got a nation of people that are getting bigger and louder, and, and I do mean bigger, louder and stronger. And I don't know what they're going to do when the people that are working don't provide the taxes. This little pig, as an example of faith, is the person who believes God enough to get saved but doesn't want his saved life to get in the way of his or her other choices. Oh, I want to be saved. I want to make heaven my home. But I sure hope it doesn't interfere with everything else I've got planned. It's amazing to me how many people would declare their salvation while they take care of the other things in life but the salvation that God has given. Let me tell you, salvation is free, but maintenance is not optional. If you're going to stay saved, you got to do those things that are necessary to continue to be saved. Somebody shout out me, amen real loud if you would. In making his home, the first little pig chooses the least effective material to quickly build a home. And he gives absolutely no thought about the future. He picks straw. Now listen, I'm not against the grass hut. And they have their place. They have their place on Gilligan's Island. They have their place in Robinson Crusoe's Island. They have their place. But friend, a grass hut is not permanent housing. At some point, you got to go and cut the back 40 so you can get another layer of covering for your grass shack. He built this home out of straw. It was good. It did what he wanted it to. It kept him warm at night. It kept him cool in the daytime. It kept him from getting rained on because he knew how to make that straw to come together in such a way to prevent him from getting rained. But I just have to believe there were some pots and pans laying around the house to get the rain when it come through that roof. Somebody help me here. Too many Christians are living like this. Too many Christians get involved, but they don't do it too deeply. They go to church, but they go for all the wrong reasons. I thought, dear God, the overseer is going to preach my message this morning. We go to church for all the wrong reasons. I love what he said about the lame man. He didn't go to church for the sake of going to church. He went to church to see what he could get. Hello? Hello? He went to church not expecting to be healed. He didn't go to church to hear a stirring rendition by the rabbi. No, 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 no. He went to church so he could stick his cup out and say, alms for the poor. Alms for the poor. And I'm here to tell you too many people go to church that same way. Wonder what they'll give me this time. Wonder why I can get out of it in this time. Oh, help me, Jesus. I better be careful. They go to church because they like the person they're sitting next to. They think she's sweet. He thinks she's wonderful. They fall and in love back there holding hands where the preacher can't see them. You've never been a preacher's kid. You don't understand what I'm about to say. Every time I'd go to church, my daddy being a pastor, people staring me down wanting to see what I was going to do. I'd go to put my arm around the woman that's now my wife, and they would tell my dad, I don't think that's proper for your son to put his arm around his girlfriend while they're in church. Kind of smacks of bearing his forearm, causing women to lust after it. Hallelujah. Y'all remember that. I don't think it's right for them to hold hands walking into the church and walking out of the church. I don't think it's right that they sit on the same pew. Talk about social distancing. Hallelujah to God. I've been dealing with it a long time. That's why I married her. I kind of like sitting with her from time to time. We go to church for all the wrong, we go to church because we like the music they play or the music that they don't play. We like the preacher because he's funny. We like the preacher because he's serious. We like the preacher because he, well, he just looks like a preacher. We like the preacher because he don't look like a preacher. I've never been so amazed at so many 40 and 50 year old men trying to dress like 20 and 30 year old men. Amen. Say, so, preacher, do you have to wear a suit? No, I don't have to. I think I ought to. I don't care if you like it or don't like it. I got guys that I know that are just a little bit younger than me that wear oversized long sleeve shirts in blue jeans with holes in them and cowboy boots because they think, I just want to I just, I just connect with the young people. You want to connect with the young people? Be real. Be real. Amen. Be real. 
That's what, that's what the millennials are looking for. That's what the group coming after the millennials are looking for. They're not looking for people who put on a show, who put on an air. They're looking for somebody who will be real with them, who will talk with them and believe in them and have confidence that what they share will not be something that just warmed over, but it's something that's from the heart. We don't build upon our faith if you're like the first little pig. And without realizing it, your faith gets weaker and weaker and weaker. When the enemy or the adversity comes in your life, it doesn't take much effort to bring down the efforts of your faith because your faith was never built up and strengthened. So when wolf come along and said little pig little pig let me in not by the hair must have been overweight by my chinny chin chin two chins I'm gonna huff and I'm gonna puff and I'm gonna blow your house in and with that he did one less Pig to wonder. He's gone. I'm going to go with that version that the first pig got eat up. Then there's the second pig. The second pig trying to learn from the first pig's mistake. He builds and invests in a sturdier material. Sticks. He went from straw to sticks. Thinking, well, this is much stronger. And it takes me almost a little bit longer than the first pig's house. But this house will take care of me. It'll be easier for me to insulate. It'll be easier for me to, to take it and, and keep the elements off of me. And so he builds that stick house. Now, it's true that sticks are somewhat stronger than the straw. But they're not the best building materials to build you a house that's going to last. Somebody say amen. And this same mistake is being played out by people, believers, if you will, today, who have that kind of faith mentality. They put their faith in things they don't really build their faith up. I mean, they, they have confidence in many things, but they put it in all the things that absolutely do not build their faith up. It's not that they are sinful things. It's just that they are not things that are going to absolutely help them. It's the things, praise God, that do not have their foundation uh, through the one faith-building ingredient that's needed by every child of God. And that faith ingredient is God's holy word. You listen to me. I've been saying this for six years. The most important thing in your life as a child of God is not the preacher. It's not the denomination. It's not whether we're in here or we're up there or whether we're on the highway or on the byway. The most important thing in your life as a disciple of God is the word of God. Jesus comes back, comes up behind Luke and Cleopas on the way to Emmaus and they're talking about all the events that have happened. I don't know what we're going to do now. Jesus is gone. Jesus is dead. There's all kinds of rumors. I love the way the preacher preached it this morning. All kinds of rumors all over town and Jesus comes up from behind them. You better watch out. Jesus will come up behind you. I said, Jesus will come up behind you. Paying attention to what you're talking about. Say, he's eavesdropping. You ought not be talking about things that shouldn't be dealing with Eve. Hallelujah. What are you men talking about? Are you new around here? Have you just moved in the area? How is it you don't know about Jesus of Nazareth? They killed him. What did Jesus do? The Bible said he began to share with them from the word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Began to share with them and open up the scriptures. Open up the teachings of Moses. Open up the prophets to them and showed them things that he hadn't had a chance. Showing them things he hadn't been able to show them before. You don't have to be on a spiritual high to receive things from God. Even sometimes when you think you're at your lowest low, Jesus can come in and begin to open up the scriptures and show you things you never saw before. This 
little pig built him a stick house. And while it was better than a straw house, he still needed something more. Some people absolutely put their confidence in all kinds of worship music, all different genres of music. They go to concerts and they follow singing groups like roadies and groupies. And they go and get involved in these. They wear t-shirts. They invest. I told you all before about the church that invested in the, the, the bumper stickers. I was in Oklahoma pastoring and this church sold, they had a bumper sticker for everything imaginable. I figure they must have sent people around to find witty sayings on church signs and they would turn them into bumper stickers and they sold those bumper stickers to help them to pay off their mortgage. Smart. But I got behind this one guy and the whole back end of his camper on his truck, I mean every available spot on the back of his truck had a bumper sticker from that church. I had inspiration. Being that we were out on the main, main road that came into town from the north, I put on our church sign out there on US 59, I believe it was, in Grove, Oklahoma. Bumper stickers are not the only signs that follow them that believe. I got no trouble with guys coming up with witty sayings. But I'm here to tell you, if you're not careful, you'll put more confidence in witty sayings than you will in what thus says the Lord God of hosts. I'm here to tell you, friend, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10 and 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We need to become involved in various things at the church, but we don't think we don't need to come to the place to think that that alone is going to get us into heaven. Because, honey, you might be involved in, in, in a food bank. You might be involved in, in some kind of a project. But if that that's all you ever do uh, and you never apply the word of God to your life. You're like too many people on Facebook who share a scripture here and share a scripture there but they don't let the scripture be revealed in their life by the way they walk and by the way they talk. It's going to take more than slapping a scripture on Facebook to get into heaven. You're going to have to put it on the heart of your very being. You're going to have to put it across the throne room of your own heart. Somebody say amen. Titus 3 and 5 tells us plain and simple, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us through the washing of regeneration. Here it comes. And renewing of the Holy Spirit. This ain't a Pentecostal thing. This is a God thing. Listen to what? Amos chapter 5. Well, I'll tell you right now, Pastor, we need to keep the Sabbath. We need, not Sunday, we need to keep Saturday. We need to practice the Ten Commandments. Really? If you break one of them, you're guilty of all of them. You, you, you break, break the speed limit and they pull you over and give you a ticket, they don't take you to jail for mass murder. They don't take you to jail for bank robbery. You listen to what I'm saying. You break one point of God's law, you're guilty of the whole law. That'll make you feel better next time you get pulled over for speeding, won't it? Like that little old lady I heard about, the cops pulled over. I said, ma'am, do you know how fast you were going? Well, no, officer. He said, I clocked you doing 95 in a 45 mile an hour zone. She said, really? He said, yes, ma'am. I need to see, I need to see your license and registration. All right. It's in the glove compartment, but I want to forewarn you, I have a gun in my glove compartment. You've got a gun in your glove compartment. Yes, sir. What are you doing with a gun in your glove compartment? Well, the fellow that's in the trunk <laughs> gave me grief. And I shot and I killed him. And I didn't know what else to do with the body, so I put the body in the trunk. He said, you took the gun in the glove compartment and you shot the, the person that's in the trunk of your car. She said, yes, sir. I didn't know what else to do. You still want that license and registration. Sit right there, ma'am. Don't move. He makes his way cautiously back to his patrol car. He gets on and says, I need backup. I got a crazy old lady out here. 
She's speeding all over creation. She's got a gun in her glove compartment, and she's got a body in the trunk of her car. Next thing you know, the chief of police shows up. They've got state troopers and county sheriffs as well. Everybody, they have got her surrounded, practically got the road cut off. The chief of police walks up. He's got on a bulletproof vest. You know, got a, a face covering to make sure he doesn't get hit with anything. He said, ma'am, do you know why this officer pulled you over? She said, well, yes, sir. You do? Yes, sir. Well, why did he pull you over? He said, I was speeding. Well, ma'am, he tells me that you have a gun in your glove compartment. She says, a gun in my glove compartment? He said, yes, ma'am. She said, I don't have a gun in my glove compartment. He said, well, ma'am, he said, you took that gun and you shot and you killed somebody and you put their body in your trunk. She said, in my trunk? She said, feel free to check. I, I'll keep my hands where you can see them. The guy comes around. He opens up the glove compartment. There is no gun. He opens up the trunk. There is no body. And she looks at him and she says, and I guess you're going to believe him about me speeding, aren't you? Preach on, preacher. Amos. God said in verse 21, chapter 5, I hate, I despise your feast days. I do not savor your sacred assemblies. And though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fat and peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments, but let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. That's God. Talking to his people who have messed up. Why? They've got second little pig faith. They're trying to fill up their faith with all kinds of stuff that God's not impressed with. Little pig. Little pig. Let me in. Say it. Not by the hair of my chinny, chin, chin. Well, I'm going to huff. Now I'm going to puff. And I'm going to blow your house in. And he did. Scratch pig number two. Then we come to the third pig. Third little pig represents the believer that didn't just get saved, but developed a relationship between the Lord and they grew in their faith in the Lord. This pig built his home out of bricks, a much stronger alternative to straw and sticks. It represents that which will last when adversity comes. This works with the understanding that in order to lay the bricks, you must have a solid foundation. Listen to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, starting at verse 10. He says, according to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it, for no other foundation can anyone lay than this. Hallelujah. That which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold or silver or precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work is going to become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each other's work or each one's work of what sort it is. And if anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. You need a firm foundation. I said you need a firm foundation. You, there, there's no better foundation in the world than you can lay than that of Jesus Christ. Whatever you're going to build, you got to build it on Jesus. And can I tell you, Jesus just don't like anything laid on him. Amen. He wants the good stuff. He wants the gold, the silver, and the precious stones. Why? Is he greedy? Not a bit. Not a bit. He wants you to invest in things that last. He wants you to invest in things that continue. Can I tell you, we're still pulling gold up out of the ground, pulling gold up out of the water, pulling gold up from the ice. Hallelujah. We are pulling gold up from years and centuries gone by. Friend, every time they find a coin, everybody goes nuts. Got a bunch of guys up there uh, in, in, in the northern eastern part of Canada, up there at a little island called Oak Island, trying to find the treasure. I don't believe there's a treasure. How long does it take you to dig a hole? In 
they buried it that deep, I think we're giving way too much credit to some people 300 years ago. I'm just saying. We can't get it out with a steam shovel. We can't get it out with, with, with a, a, a bucket loader that's as wide across as these two sets of chairs up here. Well, we got to dig a little deeper. Well, how much deeper you got to go? Before long, you're going to sink the island. We got people, they, they're finding all kinds of cities hidden in the desert in Egypt. Did you know this? They have found all kinds of places with tombs that have not been robbed by grave robbers. They are finding all kinds of temples and such down in Central America and South America where the, the, the literal entire jungle has grown up around them and they cannot be seen because of the fact that they've been grown up on. And yet they're finding all kinds of treasure. Let me tell you, gold last, silver last, rubies and diamonds last. Somebody shout amen anytime. Don't go around there and throw, say, well, I'm going to put this concrete. Concrete's a great thing. Amen. And I guarantee you I'm not going to put a gold foundation down in this world. Hallelujah. People outside my house clinking away trying to get, some of my, what are you doing? I, I just need a little bit. Jesus said something in Matthew chapter 7. Jesus said something in Matthew chapter 7 that just, it, wow. You would think these pigs would have read this part before they got out in the world. Jesus said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, which ones? Does it matter? Pick them. I love something that Larry Lee used to say. Read the red and pray for the power. Hello, Matthew, Luke. John, Mark, read them. Read the red ink. Well, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a red print Bible. Get one. Those are supposed to be the words of Jesus. Read the red and pray for the power that's in them. Jesus said, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came like a while ago, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall. Why? For it was founded on the rock. I'm here to tell you, it's time you're going to build your spiritual house founded upon the rock, Christ Jesus. There is no greater format. There is no greater foundation. There is no greater platform than to build your spiritual house than that of Jesus Christ. But he goes on. Everyone who hears these sayings of mine does not do them. They will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Y'all ever go to the coast? See these people with the houses that are out on the coast? I stand amazed. It don't matter how deep they go, everything down below the sand is sand. Well, if we take it down far enough, it'll be secure. No, it won't. Because there's something about the waves. They keep coming in and they keep pulling it away and pulling it away. And storms come and they wash it away and they wash it away. And at some point, people who thought their houses would last forever and ever and ever are suddenly find themselves not with beachfront property, not beachfront homes. They're finding themselves with water boats, houseboats. Hey, Bill, is that your house? Is it supposed to be out in the water? Jesus said it's foolish to build upon the sand. And the rain will descend and the floods will come and the winds will blow and beat on the house and it will fall and great will be its fall I'm bringing this to a close I know I can't believe it either needless to say adversity is going to come our way it's going to come during your if, if you live long enough how long is long enough pick a time amen it'll come you'll mess your knee up they'll want to put a fake knee in there and tell you it'll be all right Hey, all your pain will be gone. You'll never have pain in that knee again. Right? It's all the stuff that was around that knee that hurts. Yeah, yeah. But you're not living that kind of life, see. Adversity will come. Trouble will come. 
Trials will come. Why? Because the devil has one thing on his mind, according to John 10 and 10, and that is to steal from you, kill you, and destroy everything about you. I had the privilege of having my grandsons in my home this past week. One of the best visits ever. Surely it was one of the best visits ever. And I did my best from time to time to invest into them because the day will come when Papa's not going to be here. Papa will not be able to be called upon. Papa will not be able to be spoken to. Papa, can you explain this to me? Yes. Well, my mom keeps saying this to me all the time. Your mom's a smart woman. I don't ever cut their parents down in front of them. Unless they're really stupid. And then I don't cut them down. I just correct them. If he can't destroy me, he'll try to destroy the generation or generations that come after me. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you have children, you have grandchildren. If you're blessed enough to have great-grandchildren, You invest in them. What should I invest? The word of Almighty God. Read to them babies while they're babies. Let them get used to hearing your voice telling the very things of God's holy word to them. And as they get older, when they're four, five, and six, and they act like they know everything, but they don't, they'll say, read to me, Papa. Read to me, Granny. Read to me that book. And then you make sure they understand whose book that book is. Hallelujah to God. And you share. With, you're not hearing what I'm saying. You, are you? Are you catching what I'm saying? I'm telling you, friend. They can quote to you whatever the latest cartoon is. They can quote to you whatever the latest toy is that's being promoted upon. They can quote things to you from their school that they ought not be even learning about. You better pray for our teachers in in our church. I'm telling you straight up. There's a time to learn those things, but it ain't when they're four, five, and six years of age. And the last thing I want is somebody asking them to question whether or not they are a male or a female. Preach on, brother. I'm going to. I don't want them to look down on somebody because of the color of their skin. I don't want them to look down on somebody because they come from another part of the world. I don't want them to look down upon them because they don't have as much as they do or to look to them in such a way to feel inferior because that kid's got more than they've got. Let me tell you something. It's time, praise God, that we don't depend upon the village to raise the children. We depend upon mom and dad to have sense enough, God-given sense enough to raise the child in the way that they should go so that when they get old, they don't depart from it. He'll kill you. He'll destroy everything around you. But Jesus said in that same verse, I have come to give them life and to give it to them more abundantly. If the life of faith that you have built is made of straw. Come on, Brother Roger, if you would. The life of faith you've built is made of straw. Oh, it'll withstand certain things. And it'll give you a false sense of security that I got just enough Jesus to get me by. I don't want getting by faith in Jesus. But if you're going to fully survive, you're going to have to have something stronger than straw faith. Oh, the life of faith that you've built is built out of strong, sturdy religious sticks. Well, they're stronger, but they're still brittle. A green, a green stick will bend, but a dry stick will break. And really, truthfully, how much more Or less will it take to bring your house down if you've built your house of faith out of spiritual sticks. But 
if your house is built on the rock, if your foundation is that foundation that is the best foundation that can be laid, that is Jesus Christ. And if you'll go a step further from that situation, make Jesus your chief cornerstone. And if your walls are built out of the gold and the silver and the precious stones of God's holy word, then let me tell you the end of the story of the three little pigs of faith. Are you ready? Little pig, little pig, let me in. Mm, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, then I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your house in. Go ahead and try, you big old bag of wind, uh, for this house ain't like the ones that you blew down before. This one is built on the word of the Lord. Somebody say amen. I'm here to tell you the house withstood it. And even if he tried to come in through the chimney, he found there was a fire waiting on him for all eternity. Even if he blew a gasket in his brain in the process of trying to blow that, he might have blowed the windows out. He might have caused the door to bend a little bit but I'm here to tell you even when the shingles went hauling off the top my God the walls stood tall hallelujah the foundation stayed intact I'm here to tell you he built smartly wisely in the name of Jesus somebody say amen, amen. father help us tonight I pray help us to look at our faith what is our faith God is it the very things, oh God, the very things that all of creation is made because of faith? God spoke the word and where there was nothing, there was something. And where there was something, there was something better. And since before the very foundations of this world were laid, you, oh God, were prepared for all of our needs before us. Even before we were known in the womb and even there yet you called us by name. Help me God. Help me not to answer God with Oprah Winfrey's latest comments. Help me not to answer oh God with the comments of a media that's absolutely trying to make the story instead of reporting it. Help me, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, Lord, to absolutely, God, not to fall victim listening to leaders of government who have lost their moral compass in every imaginable way. Help me to hear thus says the Lord God of hosts and help me to follow after your word in all of my life so that for your glory and for my sake I will I will not just survive but I will thrive because of you glory who are you are you the first little pig ain't got enough faith to rub together to stay warm in the middle of August in Miami Florida with no clouds in the sky are you the second little pig that got a little bit stronger but truth of the matter is you got your confidence in all the things that are not eternal or are you the third little pig? Are you the third member of the faith family? And are you strong in the Lord? <laughs>